Hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm so excited to be back and to get back in the groove with you guys. It's so good to see you. My YouTube family is here already. Hi, Maria. Hi, Mary. How are you? I hope everybody is doing okay. It's crazy because it looks like it's like our comment section is a little <laughs> is moving slow. Um, so I'm gonna actually pull this up on my phone if you'll give me just a second because I want to be sure that I get all the comments. So I've been having some trouble with Streamyard, Streamyard lately, um, not coming up. The comments not coming up is what I'm trying to say. So give me just a second. Let me pull this up because I want to be sure that I don't miss anything. Um, in case StreamYard is acting kind of weird, because I don't know, it appears that it is. Let's see. I'm gonna pull this up real quick. There we go. I have to turn myself down. So yeah, um, it definitely looks like I'm missing lots of comments. So uh, I want to be sure that I'm seeing everybody. Okay, so obviously, guys, the comments, I'm gonna have to look down at my phone to get the comments. I apologize for that. I don't know what's going on. So I can see you on my phone, but I cannot see you on um, on the actual stream yard here. I think I'm probably gonna need to update my app, but we'll see. So I'm back. I'm so glad to be here. Sorry about that. I uh, just wanna be sure that I don't miss anything because it's been a minute since we've been together, right? I've been gone for an entire week. And it was actually a Friday to a Friday, so it feels like longer than a week. But trust me, it was really just a week. Um, had an amazing vacation, and now I'm ready to come back and get things going. So um, I do have a couple of things to talk about before we get started. Um, but first, I turned off my voice. How did I turn off my voice? <laughs> Can anybody else hear me? There's Wanda. Wanda, can you hear me okay? I know I keep looking down. I'm having to look at the comments on my phone. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear. Okay. Samara says she can hear me. Okay. All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What was I going to say? Oh, I was just going to say had a great vacation. Um, I, I was gone for uh, what feels like more than a week, but it was only a week. Um, I got sick. I don't know if you can tell. I'm a little congested. Um, I got sick on the very last day of my trip, which sounds like a huge bummer, but like it was okay because we were we were traveling home and I didn't I didn't miss anything. Um, but I've been sick like all weekend. And yesterday I went and got a um, I went and got a steroid shot yesterday. Of course, I've been taking medicines to to like clear up my congestion. Um, I, so. I sound, I sound a little congested, congested. So it's really weird because I think that it was the change in the weather because I don't know if you guys remember or not, but when I was here before vacation there, we had 10 inches of snow, if not more than that. And it was cold. It was bitterly, bitterly cold. By the time we left for vacation, it was raining. Um, and most of the snow had melted and the temperature had come up a little bit. But when we went down to Florida, it was like summer. It was summer, you know, it was 80 degrees and the sun was shining and you would never know that where we had just been, there was 10 inches of snow. The problem with all of that is, is that there was a layer of yellow pollen on everything, like any surface that you could see there was pollen on everything. And I was like, I hope I make it because I'm allergic to everything. I'm like, I hope I make it through this trip without getting sick. And I could start, I could feel it, you know, I could feel it coming to my throat. I fought it off all week like a champion. And that last day, my body was just like, nope, we're going to be sick. So I was sick all weekend, but I'm feeling better now. But I um, just wanted to give you the heads up because that's why I sound a little stuffy and congested. But um, I'm doing okay. And I am ready to get back into the groove of things. So many things waiting for you guys. While I was away, I had shipments of beads sent to me from Art Beads. So I've got beads for kits coming up. I've got, um, I think Sam did a little shopping for me while he was in Tucson. I, I'm not sure what he picked up. I haven't talked to him since, um, since over the weekend. So I'm, I'm looking forward to all of the beady goodness coming our way very, very soon. Uh, but I did, like I mentioned, want to mention two things. Uh, first and foremost, 
Hardwired was open for enrollment last week, right? While I was gone. Um, we'll still let in some stragglers. So, <laughs> so if you're still interested in being a part of Hardwired, we're going to give you a couple of extra days. Um, no more than just like three or four, but we'll give you a couple of extra days to get in just in case you forgot since I wasn't here doing live. Some people forget that Hardwired opens for enrollment um, at the end of the month and at the beginning of the next. So a couple of days is all you've got if you want to go ahead and, and grab um, your spot for the month. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until the end of the month again. But I just wanted to throw that out there because um, I wasn't around to say it. And I know that there were posts and stuff in the community, but sometimes when I'm gone, people don't check the community because they're like, why should I'm here? So I get it. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, what else? So there were two things that I wanted to address, and these are um, things that you can skip past if you're watching this on replay, though I hope at least one of them you stick around for because it might apply to you. These are um, things that are in relation to my income, and I don't really talk about this a whole, whole lot, but there was a comment that came to me over YouTube, and I wanted to address it here um, because I know some of you are Facebook and some of you are YouTube. Um, so there was a, there was a Facebook, I'm sorry, a YouTube comment on one of my videos recently that said, uh, they were basically, it was complaining about the ads. <laughs> sorry, my housekeeper just got here. The dogs are going to bark. Her. That's enough. It's just Audrey. Hush. So, um, the comment was something along the lines of your, there's too many ads in your videos. Like, I don't want to sit through an ad. There's an ad at the very start of your video and all of this. Um, and I didn't address that comment on YouTube specifically because I wanted to come here and kind of address it to everybody because I don't think people understand. So I get it. I don't like to sit through ads on YouTube either. However, when I follow a certain content creator, there are certain people that I follow on YouTube. I will watch their their ads is because I don't know if people realize it or not, but that's where your income from YouTube comes from. So I have to have ads on my videos in order to get paid for the watch hours of my content. So if you go and you watch one of my replay videos on YouTube, which you can do also here on Facebook, but if you do it on YouTube and you watch a replay, you will get ads. That's just kind of part of the course for YouTube. Um, and those ads are how I get revenue from my videos, which allows me to give you free content. You have to remember, the content is free. What you're watching is 100% free to you. In order for me to make money from that, I have to add ads to those replay videos. It's the same thing as watching a TV show, right? If you watch a TV show, which a lot of people don't do anymore because we stream everything. But if you're watching a TV show, you have a commercial break. The commercial break is what pays for those that content, that TV show to come to you, right? Those are sponsors. Those sponsors pay the company making the TV show. It is the exact same thing on YouTube. So... While on one hand, I know that the ads on YouTube can be frustrating, I, I and I understand that like you can skip them if you want to, uh, but, but don't come at me and attack me for having ads because that is quite literally the only way that I get paid. Um, I mean, I get, I have other sources of income, but as far as YouTube videos are concerned, those ads, if you watch those ads, I get a very small, YouTube does not pay very much. I do get a small portion some change, quite honestly, uh, from you watching those those ads. So I just want you to know that that's there's the reason for those ads to be there. Um, you can skip through them if you want to, but if you if you want to help out, you know, watch the ads when you're watching the replays. It's only sixty seconds of your life, and um, you know, I I appreciate it when you do it, and I hope that it doesn't cause you to unsubscribe. That's all. Um, so that was the one thing. Now, the other thing about ways that you can help me, um, as far as giving you free content. And one thing that I don't think that people have realized quite yet is that my art beads lives, when I do an art bead live on Fridays, which I will continue to do so as long as they will have me guys, I am only employed with art beads as long as I can make sales. Um, and I'm just being honest with you about it. So it's sort of like when I was working for JTV, my status as a designer with that company, I could be the greatest designer in the entire universe. I'm not, but I could be, but it wouldn't make any difference if I were not making sales. 
So those sales are important. So when you come to watch, I'm never going to pressure you to make a purchase from me over on Artbeats. But I do think that it's important for you to know that every time you make a purchase during my live, and art beads live, um, I do get commission from that. So I want to be really upfront about that. So know that when you are um, when you are making a purchase during a live, if you're buying something, if you're buying the beads, or you're buying the bead mix, I actually get a small commission back from all of those sales. And that's how they keep me around. If my sales are good, then obviously they're going to keep me around. Um, so again, I'm not trying to push you to make purchases when you watch those lives, but please understand that that is where some of my income comes from. So if you're looking to stock up on jump rings or you're looking to stock up on beads or things that I don't offer in my kits, that's a great way to do it because you're helping me to continue to give you free content. So there you go. I'm not, a, I'm not trying to, to persuade you to do anything one way or another, but I do want to be 100% transparent about where my income comes from. Um, and my income directly comes from you. Um, so, um, I, I, I just want you to, I just want you to know that if you need jump rings, get them on our beads while I'm doing a show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. That's all. All right. So Bridget says, oh, so I should not skip those ads. It's helpful if you don't skip them, because if you skip them, then I don't get the revenue from them. Um, that's I don't I think I think people need to know that that's the way YouTube works, because like I you can make money from YouTube. There are these like amazingly crazy content providers on YouTube that make millions of dollars. That's how they make their millions of dollars. I'm getting pennies on the ad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of ads they've got going on, but they have, they obviously have viewers with big, deep pockets. I'm not worried about any of that. I just hope that you don't mind that there are ads. I mean, cause that's, that's just the way that it is just like regular TV. Okay. So let's get into it today. I've got a beautiful project for you guys. We are putting together a necklace that is inspired by Mardi Gras. While I was in Florida, I stayed at the Port Orleans resort and they were just starting to decorate for Mardi Gras. It already looked like it already looked like New Orleans anyway because of the resort. I stayed in the French Quarter section, um, but they were starting to put out some decorations that were Mardi Gras related. And I was like, oh, I wish I could come back when this is in full swing. So Mardi Gras happens in the month of February this month um, or this year. It, the date is it's always fluid. It's one of those weird things that's never on the same day. Um, but Mardi Gras is coming up and purple is a huge color for jewelry making. So I wanted to really kind of play on that. So this is kind of a farewell to my French Quarter stay uh, in the Port Orleans Resort and a, um, a nice fun project for you guys. This is simple stringing. There's nothing hard here. We do have to alter the pendant just a little bit. So if you've got pendants that are similar to this, I hope that I can show you how to use these in a way that might work for you instead of just popping a jump ring on them. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get you turned around and we're going to get started because I've done a lot of talking and I apologize for that. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So <clears throat> let's see here. I am going to make a multi-strand necklace for you guys. We're going to start out with the bottom strand. We're actually going to do, uh, we're going to do the bottom strand first. And in order for me to do this, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to switch back and forth between my Facebook and Okay, my picture. I just want to be sure that I'm getting everything. So this is going to be our bottom strand. We're doing a two, or th I'm sorry, a three strand necklace. We're going to start out with the bottom strand. I've got these beautiful glass pearls in this pastel purple color that I think is really, really lovely. Now, this is not a straight up like Mardi Gras purple, but I feel like Mardi Gras purple can be a little bold, particularly for like the winter time entering into some warmer days coming up. <laughs> fingers crossed on that. Um, so I wanted to go with something a little softer. I also have these little crystal drops and I've got some two millimeter silver round beads to go in between here. Now you could use, uh, seed beads if you wanted to. I also have a couple of rhinestone, uh, or crystal spacers here in AB. And like I said, most of these are just glass pearls. I've got some smaller ones here for my edges, some larger ones for the center. And then I have these crystal drops. And I want to show you. So these are kind of blue, but they're also purple. You can see they have that kind of 
AB flash to them. So they look really beautiful next to the purple. All right, so simple stringing, that's the way we're going today. So I'm gonna start with my bottom strand of beading wire. I'm using some 49 strand bright. And I'm just gonna cut a little section of this. All right, and we are going to start out by using a wire guardian and a crimp to grab my wire guardians here. <coughs> All right, there are my two wire guardians and the crimps are right here. And you're gonna need several wire guardians and crimps for these because we're doing three strands. So you're gonna need six crimps and six, six wire guardians if you're gonna use the wire guardians. All right, so I'm gonna thread on my crimp and then my wire guardian. It was Lynn, it was so much fun. We had an amazing time. We had literally only been there for 24 hours and Q was already planning our second, our second trip. Um, so we're going to go ahead and book the same week for next January. And we're just going to make that a thing. He absolutely loved it. And of course I did too, because I'm, I'm a huge Disney fan. Um, but he loved it so much and was in so much awe that he was like, when can we come back? I'm like, we've only been here for a day. <laughs> but yeah. I could live there too. And we talked about that as well because the, the, you know, I can do these videos from literally anywhere in the world. And, um, we, we are, we've talked about moving, but didn't make any, any, <clears throat> you know, definite plans, but we definitely talked about, you know, how nice it would be to live in Orlando and be able to experience the Disney parks whenever we wanted to. I don't know that it would take the magic away from them if I had access to them all the time, though. That's my biggest thing. All right, so I'm going to thread on my smaller pearls here. I'm going to thread on five of those. Okay, then I'm going to thread on one of those crystal spacers and a big pearl, one of the large ones. Okay, now we're going to start popping these drops in between there. So on either side of the drop, I'm going to put one of these little two millimeter silver beads. This is, again, a place where you could use a seed bead if you wanted to. The reason that I'm using these is because... The little crystal drops are tapered, right? They're tapered right at the top. And <clears throat> if you sit them directly next to the pearl, they'll work. But once you get everything strung, they kind of want to pop around and like not hang correctly. And it's because they're really fighting for space against this larger bead. So a way to make sure that they don't do that as much because they're still going to do it a little bit is to add those little spacer beads in between there and it really just kind of helps to set them apart so it doesn't look like such a mess like you really do get to see those drops when you give them a little bit more space so that's the pattern here is we're just going to we're going to alternate between our big pearls and then our little drops with the little beads next to them. So we're just doing simple stringing here. Are you serious, Wanda? Wanda says, for those of you who are on YouTube, um, just move to, so wonder, wonder sis, <laughs> just moved to Florida just so she could be a Walt Disney World Magic key annual pass holder. She's loving it. That's what we talked about doing. Like um, we, we, had some very serious conversations um, about it. I mean, it's it's not out of the realm of possibilities in our future. Um, the only thing really that keeps me from making any kind of major moves at the moment is just because my daughter, my youngest, is still in school. Um, if she were not in school anymore, uh, I most definitely would be packing house right now. <laughs> 100% would be packing house. 
Um, and that's not to say that I couldn't convince her that living in Florida would be a great idea. But I would be giving up snow. That's a thing. You know what I mean? Like, I would be giving up my winter. I do. I'm not much. I've I've made peace with spring and summer and warmer weather. But I am really a, um, I'm a cold weather person. And moving to Florida would uh, be a, a giving up of my fall and winter. So it's just one of those things to take into consideration. Um, but who knows what the future holds? Q and I talked about a lot of things <laughs> while we were on vacation. Don't know. Don't know. So many possibilities. And I love that. I love that. Life is a journey. Never know. Never know where things are going to go. The other, you know, the other option was to move to um, Idaho, where... <laughs> I would get plenty of snow there and I would be able to work uh, in the Art Beats warehouse <clears throat> on a regular basis and be more of a full-time um, person there and be able to help um, in, a, in a more, more productive kind of way. Um, but I, I'm, I don't, other than that, I, that's the only thing that would it's the only reason I would go to Idaho. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't just out of the blue be like, hey, let's move to Idaho. You know what I mean? It's it's not somewhere that I would choose to live, but for work reasons, um, that was definitely an on the table kind of conversation. <clears throat> but for right now, it looks like I'm going to stay stay put and uh, plan another, another Disney adventure in January for 2025. So... Regardless, y'all are not going to lose me. I'm not going anywhere as far as you are concerned because I can do this quite literally anywhere. These little tiny beads are so hard to string because it's hard to see them. It's hard to see the hole in them. Right, move to Florida, take long vacays to Idaho during the summers. That's a really good idea, actually. <laughs> we just get a vacation house in um, in Idaho. We could get a little because that like the house that we stayed in when we were there was so cutie patootie. Get a little vacation house in Idaho and go and enjoy winters, and I could spend like six weeks, eight weeks, you know, in Idaho twice a year. I don't know. I think they might, they might go for that idea, actually. <laughs> Gonna have to have a conversation with them about that. Cause they did straight up ask. They were like, so out of the new designers here, anybody willing to move to Idaho? And I was like, Hmm, <laughs> it would be so convenient as far as like creating projects and you know, all of that. Look how beautiful this is going to be. Oh my goodness. It's just stringing. Guys, listen. Beautiful jewelry does not have to be a representation of every skill you've ever learned. Just string some beautiful beads together. You know? Lay out some of your favorite things. Uh, what? Whoops. Speaking of favorite things, almost left out the crystal here. Hold on. Get a little... A little excited. So I'm looking at the crystals because I'm trying to put that AB flash on the back. It may not always work out that way because it is kind of hard to see. But I was kind of going for that as I was picking each one of those up. In the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter that much, though, to be honest with you. Okay, so here's our last big pearl for this bottom drop, bottom strand of our necklace, rather. This would be beautiful all by itself. <clears throat> Not going to lie. I would just wear it just like that. You know, I would just continue up the side with some more pearls if I had them and just make this a beautiful one strand necklace. I'm tempted to, to do that in another design just for myself because I do love pearls, but to add a splash of crystal sparkle in there is just beautiful. So uh, really, really a fan of this. This would be a good kit right? Just this, just this section, like just doing a necklace and then maybe putting some chain on the back. That would be a good kit. I may have to look into 
grabbing some more of these beads to do that just because it's so, so pretty. All right. Now, <clears throat> finishing off this strand on this end, we're going to do our crystal spacer and then five more of our pearls and we're going to crimp. <clears throat> then we're going to move up to the next strand, which is another simple stringing strand. Um, we're just going <clears> to <throat> string some beautiful beads together. It'll be that third strand where we really kind of do a little bit different to try to get that pendant to work the way that I want it to. Um, I was, I was very particular about it. So once we get these two strands together, I can really kind of show you how I made, how and why I made some of the decisions that I made as far as this design is concerned, which may help you in the future. All right, so crimp and then our wire guardian. Back down through our wire guardian and then back down through my crimp. There's something very intriguing about moving to Florida in a place where you could quite literally have a palm tree in your yard. Like that, to me, <laughs> that's almost enough right there to make me move. Like, okay, I want a palm tree in my yard. I can, I could totally go for that. There's so many cute little neighborhoods. Because we're not bougie or fancy. We, we don't need much. You know, just a little house with enough room for me to have a studio <laughs> and a palm tree in the front yard. Maybe <laughs> it would be nice. It would be lovely. All right. So we have crimped. Okay. And we're going to move on to the next strand up. So the next strand is a little bit shorter. I'm going to cut another piece of my bead stringing wire and we're going to go ahead get those beads out. So I'm going to sit this one to the side for a minute so that we can lay out our beads here. So this one has some more pearls, some more of the crystal spacers. Um, this one also has these really beautiful rondelles that are this like purple. They're clear, but they have purple and that, that like AB finish to them. And then there are some of these little beads that are just like, they're drucks, but they're like, they look like bubbles almost. So a few more of the glass pearls will go onto this one as well as some of these drucks. And then, <clears throat> whoops, we will be putting the rondelles in the middle. And we'll also be using some spacer beads here. Now the spacer beads, I'm going to put some of the metal beads on the ends. We'll talk about that. And then I'm using some seed bead spacers to go in between my rondelles and <clears throat> the seed bead spacers actually came on the actual strand itself so i just decided to keep them so there are all of those and then there are these okay so now that i've laid everything out got everything separated so that it is easy to grab we are going to go ahead and crimp again so i'm going to start my new strand with my crimp tube and my wire guardian. If you'll remember for the school necklace, you're gonna need six of each, six wire guardians and six crimps. Guys, don't forget that my Michaels classes start back this month. Um, I believe the day for that is February 19th. Reminders will be posted so that you don't miss it. Um, it's been a while since I've done the Michaels classes. Those start back up very, very soon. Uh, here in the beginning, I'll only be doing one a month, but, um, it's still fun and it's extra content, right? All right, so with our crimping, making sure that those wires are not crisscrossing inside our crimp, we're gonna place this into the back notch of the crimper tool. We're gonna give that a squeeze. It's gonna further separate those wires out. We're gonna turn that sideways, place it into the front notch of the crimper tool, give that a squeeze, give it the tug test. And then you're gonna trim off the excess wire. All right, now, first things first, I'm going to thread on, I know they're hard to see, I'm gonna thread on five. Hold on, I feel like I'm missing one. I am, it's over here. <laughs> I'm gonna thread on five of those little two millimeter beads. Um, this is going to help keep things from fighting for space when we bring those three strands of the necklace together. So it may not, that may not make a whole lot of sense at the moment, but I will show you when we get to that point 
So five of these are going on. Okay. I'm going to switch over to my picture here real quick. All right. Then we are doing two of the trucks that look like bubbles. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to do a crystal spacer. We're going to do two more of the drops. Wait, am I doing two more? I am. I'm just missing one. <laughs> the beads look so similar. They all get mixed up very, very easily as far as the color is concerned. So there's that. All right. Now we're going to do two of the glass pearls. So there's one, two, and we're going to do another crystal spacer. We're gonna drop all that down so you can see this is what we've got so far five of the metal beads two drux crystal spacer two drux two glass pearls another crystal spacer now i'm going to start my rondelles and <clears throat> the rondelles are going to be a rondelle and a seed bead in between each one again this is going to kind of give those rondelles room these will lay nicely because of the shape they they make a nice little strand just strung straight next to each other but i do like the addition of the uh the seed bead in between there just to really kind of give them each their own little standing ovation if you will <laughs> right you know i mean it just really shows off each one of the beads plus the fact that if you've only got a handful of these little rondelles putting a spacer in between them is a great way to kind of get more bang for your buck as far as the length is concerned um and i didn't pick out any seed beads to go with these they just came with the seed beads and i didn't toss them i just used them so uh anytime you've got strands like that that already have seed beads think twice before you toss those seed beads in the trash um a lot of times they're handy to use the spacer beads. Maybe not with what you bought, but maybe with something else. Okay. I would love to be able to breathe completely. I hope by, by Friday I should be congestion free. <laughs> it took a lot for me to decide to get that steroid shot. The doctor was like, oh, I'll give you a steroid shot. You're going to feel great. And I was like, oh, but steroid shots make me kind of crazy. <laughs> they always make me a little jittery and a little, look how pretty. They always make me jittery and a little, um, a little spicy, you know, they make me a little grouchy. And, but I was so desperate to breathe. I was like, okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> So YouTube family, I cannot see any of your comments at the moment. I'm so sorry. And if you're, if you're saying things and asking me questions, I'm so sorry that I'm not getting to see any of that right now. I apologize. It's, it's an issue with StreamYard. So I'm so sorry. I'm not ignoring you. I promise. All right. So there's our section of those rondelles. Again, another strand that would just be a beautiful single strand necklace. Right, you don't even have to add this to this neck, this like multi strand design if you don't want to. Individually, each strand is beautiful, but we are extra, so we are going to make ours into this fabulous design. So, finishing this off with our crystal spacer, our two glass pearls, okay, two of our drucks. Another crystal spacer, two drucks, and then five of the little two millimeter metal beads. So there's one, two, three, four. And five. 
Hi, Jessica. It was so fun. We had an amazing time. It was it was too short. <laughs> it was, was too much too short of a vacation. All right, so now we're gonna crimp. We're gonna thread on our crimp tube and our wire guardian. Going back down through the wire guardian and then down through our crimp. So again, making sure your wires are not crisscrossing, you're going to bring in your crimper tool, that into the back notch, give that a squeeze, turn it sideways, put it in the front notch, give it a squeeze, give it the tug test, want to be sure that you don't go through all that stringing just for it to fall apart. Okay, <clears throat> so... Now, I can show you a little bit about what I was talking about as far as why we use the metal beads here. So we haven't gotten to that third strand yet, but I wanna lay this out for you to give you a little bit of understanding of a couple of design choices here. So with our bottom strand, our beads here are like a six millimeter bead. And we started the main part of our design for our second strand with six millimeter beads as well. If we put these two six millimeter beads up against each other and bring them together with a jump ring, they're really gonna be fighting for space. It will look okay and you can definitely do it that way, but a way to keep that, that from looking like a mess where everything is fighting against each other is to use some metal beads to start your strand. That's gonna make sure that everything hangs nicely because remember, we're gonna add a third strand of the, to this as well. So we've got three strands that are, that are using the same jump ring ultimately up here at the top, actually just two, because our next strand is actually gonna go on another jump ring. But we've still, regardless if you put all three strands together, you don't want things to look super, super crowded and it will affect the way that it hangs as well. So it's a nice uh, idea when you can to add smaller beads. Does not have to be seed beads. Uh, doesn't even have to be as small as two millimeters. Uh, even a four millimeter or a three millimeter bead here would be just enough to give uh, the room that all the beads deserve when they're coming together in that little area. So just want you to know that that is why I made that choice. And when I have these laid out, okay, the next strand up is just slightly shorter than the bottom strand. Now, when we are doing the next strand, I need more space. And the reason that I need more space is because we're putting a pendant in here. And the pendant takes up quite a bit of real estate as far as the, the overall drape of the whole necklace is concerned. And <clears throat> the cool thing about this pendant, other than the fact that it is this really amazing chroma finish, fabulous Mardi Gras mask, is there are several places where you can add jump rings to hang this. You can hang it right here with just a single jump ring. You can hang it here on either side. You can use any of the filigree, right? You can hang dangles from all of the filigree. You can put your jump rings way out here on the edges if you want to. It's totally up to you. But for me in the way that I want this next strand to look, I want to use not this one that goes up the highest, but these two, and I'm gonna put a bead in the middle. That's because the bead choices that I picked out for this strand are different sizes. Okay, um, in order for me to have one of the larger beads in the center, I have to be able to hang my pendant underneath my center big bead. Now, I could just forego all of that and say, you know what, I don't care if there's a, a big bead in the center of this necklace. I just I just want the, the pendant. And then it wouldn't make any difference. You could li quite literally put this on a jump ring and hang it on the strand. But for me, I wanted there to be a clear center. I didn't want to mess up the pattern of my beads. My beads are three smaller like tube beads and then these lantern shaped beads. Um, so to make that work, right, I have to use my two outer edges, the two outer openings to hang my pendant. 
in order to keep this center big bead in my strand, right? Does that make sense? So I'm going to show you with some eye pins how to make that work for you. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use eye pins and we're going to make these little connectors without any beads. So essentially we're doing eye pins and we're making an eye on the end of the eye pin without a bead in between. I know it doesn't look like much here in the beginning, but <laughs> let me show you what I mean. All right. So we're going to take, let's sit all this over here to the side so it doesn't, doesn't distract too, too much. We're going to take an eye pin and we're going to open that up. Let me grab my pliers here. I'm going to open with a twist and I'm going to thread that onto the section where I want this to hang. And I'm going to close that back. Okay. Now I need to make another loop, right? So I need that loop to be going in the opposite direction of the loop that I've already got. And let's actually, let's take this off. I did these on yesterday, but I feel like I can do this off of the pendant and then put it all together. Okay. What I want to do is I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers. I'm going to hold on to that loop that already that's already there. Okay. Then I'm going to take my wire right at the top of that loop and I'm going to bend it in the opposite direction. Okay. Just like that. And we're doing a simple loop here, just like we would if there were a bead on this eye pin, but without the bead. So now I'm going to come in with my cutter tool. I'm going to trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. Okay, and then I'm going to use my round nose pliers. Take that wire and roll back to create my loop. So what I've got is this little connector, if I could hold on to it, <laughs> that's got a loop going one way and a loop going the other way, right? No bead in there. Now you could add a bead in there if you've got more space, right? You know, if, if your bottom strand is going to be a little bit longer, like your, your the bottom two strands are going to hang a little bit further down. You could add a bead in here if you wanted to. Um, but since we are already working with a space that I pre determined, we're not going to add a bead. So second eye pin grabbing the wire, bending it. Okay. So I'm going to come in with my cutter. And again, I want to trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch. And then I'm going to roll back to close up that loop. Okay. So again, we've got a loop going one way and a loop going the other way. Okay, now we're going to attach these to our pendant. So very carefully, and you probably need to use two pairs of pliers to do this so that you don't mess up your loops. You're going to hold and twist open. And then very gently close that back. And you're going to do the same thing over here. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so ready to be able to breathe. <laughs> and not sneezing and coughing. All right. Twisting very gently. <laughs> Attaching my, to my pendant. And then... And closing. All right, so now what we've got is have these two little loops here, right? So that now I've got two connections instead of the single connection in the center. Okay, so what we need to add to those is a couple of jump rings. So I'm going to use 
two jump rings here. I'm using four millimeters. In the original, I believe I used five millimeter jump rings. I'm going to use four millimeters. If it's too crowded, I'll switch those out. But for now, we're going to use two four millimeter jump rings to go on top. And then we're just going to start stringing our necklace up and I'll show you how to string this on. Okay, so grab another piece of bead string wire. Uh oh, I lost the end of my wire. There it is. Okay, now this is a shorter strand, so I don't have to have nearly as long a piece of beading wire. But same steps, we're going to start out with our crimp tube, our wire guardian. back down through the wire guardian. All right, and then we're gonna crimp. Back notch of the crimper tool, give that a squeeze. Front notch of the crimper tool, give that a squeeze, give it the tug test and trim off. All right, now we're going to start stringing. So the pattern for this is going to be um, three of these two beads in between our lantern shaped beads. However, on the ends, because I was short, some of these beads, we're only going to do two. So for the first two beads, we're doing two of the little tube beads, one of the lantern beads, and then we're going to proceed with three. So <clears throat> started with two, move to three. I can't remember how many lantern beads we have, so we're going to lay these out. Oh no, that's not right because I've already got two. One, two, three, four, five. And then our center bead, right? One, two, no. I wish I could math like a normal person. <laughs> okay. One, two. Three, four, five in the center. My goodness. Ugh. Numbers and I are just not, we're not friends. We we don't get along. We really don't. <laughs> I hear a cat crying somewhere. She sounds like she's trapped in a room somewhere. Well, she's going to have to wait. That's her fault for getting trapped in a room somewhere. <laughs> Does that mean? I hear her crying, though. Poor baby. I wonder where she is. All right. There's really no telling. If my housekeeper's here. You'd think she would hear her, but she's probably got her headphones on. <laughs> so, oh, man. She's crying really loud. She's probably in a closet. All right, so we're going to do three more. So I've made it to the middle here. So three more of these. Okay. Now we're going to thread on. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yes, I did this correctly. <laughs> we're going to thread on the jump ring of one. So that first jump ring. We're going to thread on that next lantern bead and then our next jump ring. I want to be sure that your jump ring is going in the right direction though so this can be a little tricky so let me turn it upside down so that everything's hanging and then slide that through there. Now you can see how that's going to hang. It's going to hang underneath our center bead. There's room. We're going to thread on our next three beads and we're just going to finish out our strand here. So 
So you can see, and there's enough distance between the tip of that pendant and our lantern bead in the center. So they're not pushing up against each other. They're not touching. If you want a little bit extra room there, you could use a larger jump ring if you wanted to, but I think there's plenty of space there. <laughs> she's still crying like crazy. I think she's in my bedroom closet. <laughs> As I was getting dressed before the live, she's probably in there and she's like, um, excuse me, you forgot about me. How dare you, human? I'll let her out here. We're pretty, we're, I'll let her out when I get done. We're pretty close to the end of our project here. So <laughs> she can hang on another 10 minutes. She should be good. It's just, it's just too funny. She can get really loud. It's always amazing to me. Cats have the tiniest little bodies. Well, I mean, some some have bigger bodies than others, but it's amazing to me at how loud something so small can be. All right, last lantern bead, and then we're going to finish off, remember, with just the two on the end. All right, now we're going to crimp the end and we're going to put all of this together. And I'm going to use a series of jump rings to put all this together. Um, there are a ton of different ways you can put this necklace together, but mine is, mine is making sure that I have enough room for everything and that everything is not crowded. But please feel free if you're going to make a multi-strand design to do it however you want. This is just one of many ways. All right, pulling that down, and we're going to crimp. Placing that into the back notch of our crimper, giving that a squeeze. Front notch, giving that a squeeze. Give it the tug test. Oops. All right, this is our little top strand. And look how pretty. I love that. Love, love, love. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in the bottom strands and show you. I feel. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Another sneeze. Sorry about that. All right, so. Let's see, with everything laid out, that's enough. That's enough. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two large jump rings. I know you can't really see those at the moment. Two large jump rings with our smaller jump rings in between. All of this will make sense here in just a second. Our top strand is actually gonna go onto the top jump ring. So let's go ahead and put this together. And then I'm gonna make a quick little change here. So in the original project, so opening a big jump ring, threading on my bottom strand and my next strand. Then I'm going to thread on two jump rings, smaller jump rings. I'm going to close this back. So in the original project for the length of this, I used this chrome chain, which I think is really, really pretty. But I've decided that I'm not going to do that on this one. I'm going to switch it up and I'll show you what I'm going to use here in just a second. All right, taking my next jump ring going through those two, and then I'm going to add my top strand. And I'm going to close that back. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. My next large jump ring going through the two smaller jump rings and then my top strand and closing that back. Okay, so I've got my three strands ready and you can see the distance between everything. 
Everything looks nice. Nothing's crowding. My pendant has plenty of room to hang. It could actually hang a little bit lower. Um, I could use a larger jump ring here. That would make it hang just a little bit lower, but I think it looks just fine as it is. So next thing to do is to add the length. So <clears throat> like I mentioned, originally I had taken double strands of this chroma um, chain and it looks great. It really does. It's the same kind of chroma that is in the, in the pendant, but I think what I'm going to do instead of that is I'm going to use some silver silk. So I have this purple passion chain that came out forever ago. I don't even know if it's still available on the website. It's pearlesque purple passion, silver silk, uh, capture chain. And I thought this would just be the perfect, like Mardi Gras sparkle for this necklace. So I thought I would use it instead. And I haven't used silver silk for anything in a really long time. So I'm going to take my chain here where I had pre-measured out my chain. And I'm just going to cut my capture chain to the same length. So that I'm not really, uh-oh. Not really altering the length of my necklace too much. So I cut that first piece. And I cut my second piece. Okay. Now I'm going to get my findings out for this because you got to have special findings for your. What did I do with it? <laughs> special findings. And they are literally holding the phone up. All right. I'm going to have to put my phone down here. My comment section has stopped. I don't know why. So I apologize, everybody. All right. So let me grab. I hope I have enough findings for this. There's one. There's two, and I need two more. There's one, and oh, I hope I have one more. I do, I do, I do, I do. Okay, so now for the findings. <clears throat> so I reuse my silver soap findings. I used to. So that's why this one's got something in it. So I'm going to use my pliers to open this back up. That ball chain out of there. And I'm going to open these up just a little bit too. This one's tarnished just a little bit, so I'm going to hit it with my polishing cloth. Bring that shine back to it. Okay. Okay, so now, if you've never used capture chain before, when you cut it, the end can fray a little bit. So I like to squeeze just the end and then put that in to finding and then I like to use my nylon jaw pliers to close this just so that I don't mark up the metal so I just use that to gently squeeze that closed and just like everything else give it the tug test you're gonna put one on the other side these findings have a loop on them already so all I have to do is just add jump rings and my clasp So again, I'm just kind of pinching the ends. And then use my nylon gel pliers, give that a squeeze. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one real quick and then we'll put this all together and I'll put it on the bus so you can see it. I cannot see any comments at the moment. I'm so sorry. Even my Facebook comments have stopped working at the moment. 
definitely having some technical difficulties today. I don't know that it's affected you guys any, but it has definitely affected my end of things. Okay. All right. Now, let me take my hardware off of my chain that I had used because I had already had everything put on here. So I take that off and that means I can save this really cool chain for something else. And then the last thing to do is just to add it to our jump ring down here. And I'm actually going to use a go between jump ring because I don't like, to, I don't want the side of this showing. I want it to be front facing. So in order to use, to do that, I'm going to use an extra, an extra jump ring in here. All right, and we're going to close that back. I am done. I'm going to try to pull up my comments one more time because my internet is acting crazy. I hope you guys can see everything okay. I wish I could see comments again. That would be lovely. But, all right, we're just going to keep going. The show must go on. I'm going to turn you guys around, put this on the bus so you can see it, and turn you around. Whether I can see the comments or not, I know you're there. I know you're there. <laughs> all right, so let me turn you around. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. I appreciate you letting me be a part of your afternoon. As always, it is so nice to be back. Don't forget, Hardwired will be meeting this afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern time. We are hitting it hard. We're going to be putting together some really cool heart and moon pendants over in Hardwired. And again, if you're interested in being part of Hardwired, enrollment is technically closed, but since I was on vacation, I... um. I will give an extra couple of days if you want to come and join us. And here is our finished piece. I love the silver silk addition to this. I think the silver silk was the perfect choice to add because it's got just a little bit of sparkle to it. So, so pretty. It's such a fun necklace. I love every bit of this. This definitely has like Mardi Gras vibes because of the colors and that mask, but it's not like the classic like deep purple and gold and green, right? This is a little bit more like wear wear friendly, if you know what I mean. And I would I would wear this all year, not just for Mardi Gras, but. Uh, and again, each individual strand would make a beautiful necklace all on its own. So you've definitely got three necklaces in one here if you wanted to just separate those out and wear them individually. And I hope that it helps you troubleshoot how to um, put a pendant in there and still have a center bead. I think that was a cute little technique that is definitely uh, one that you can always pull out and use if you've got a pendant that is like that and you want to use, you know, you want it even and you don't want to mess up your bead strands. So all right, everybody. I'll probably put this over in the Etsy shop. I also want to show you, I put together a quick little pair of earrings to go with this, which I didn't do as a project because I knew this was going to take the full hour, but um, just a little pair of earrings in the same kind of chroma finish, the ear wires, the chain, and then some hearts that all really kind of match all of this. So if you wanted to make yourself a little set, you absolutely could do that with just using, you know, not the exact beads, but things that match. Uh, you don't have to be matchy-matchy. All right, everybody, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I appreciate you. Thanks for letting me be a part of your BD journey. And I will be back with you guys um, hardwired 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be back with all of the rest of you on Friday for our Feel Good Friday show at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. I will see you soon. Bye, guys.
It doesn't want to end. <laughs> I'm going to say bye again and keep trying. Bye, guys.